Uh, the BRT project only here in Cebu. Okay, BRT project in Cebu. Okay, good. But I'm assigned to Infra <laughs> Design. Engineer. Infra. Okay, yeah. Infra Design. Okay, good. And then Karen, you are handling. Uh, I'm currently working at the Department of Human Settlements, sir. Oh yeah, Urban Human Settlements. Yeah, yeah. In in what uh, which part? On more on uh, regulation of uh, real estate, okay. and yeah, more uh, like that. Uh, which city? Uh, Butuan City, sir. Butuan City, uh, Region okay. 13, Caraga. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay. Sige. So I just wanted to know that so I can like look up some information on that. Sige. So um, were you guys, uh, what were your undergraduate courses again? Mine is civil engineering. Okay. And then Karen Mine is BS architecture, sir. Okay, so most yes. familiar is si Karen Annie. So <laughs> this is just a refresher <laughs> for Karen and this is a... <laughs> for the, the new thing for for face okay so um basically site planning can be done not just by architects but i think also engineers landscape architects and even just like the common person so as long as they know the different parts of the site so uh, basically what we're doing in regional planning is applying these same principles but on a larger scale and these like site planning can hold true uh not just for like individual residential lots but also like your room your these are like very general very kanang um universal sort of theories now we sort of um my professors and me like uh, i'm teaching you now we can apply to basically any scale so we're talking about site planning in terms of individual lots residential lots commercial lots etc etc even like sites for new roads bridges etc so the first step, first and uh, first and foremost, is really identifying your stakeholders and the site. So you need to know where your location is, and then uh, it's either the clients, it could be the government or like a private company or like a public sort of NGO. They want you to design something or propose something, and then they already have the site in hand. It can also happen uh, they have an idea, but they don't know where to put it. So this is really the first step. Once you identified who you're working for, um, for what purposes are you doing a proposal, and then your the location of your proposal. Next step, um, once everything you know where you are, like who you're who you're working with. Next step is to identify the problems and the objectives. So, for example, over here, I was approached by NGO, um, an NGO called uh, what do you call this uh, from Mega Cebu. Um, our proposal was a pedestrianization of, uh, let me show you the map here. Where's our map? Map, map, map. I'll just do this one. Uh, pedestrianization of Osmeña Boulevard in front of Basilica del Santo Nino. And then there was already existing studies for this. Uh, this was done by uh, Planades, prepared for NEDA Region 7. And the idea of pedestrianization was to basically close down a piece of uh, a road, a section of road, and make it pedestrian only. There are a lot of like, uh, uh, what they call it, conflicting um, ideas about this. Like they say, if you close down the road to vehicles, business will go down, et cetera, et cetera. But there's also some uh, uh, good news that say that pedestrian <laughs> pedestrianization actually increases businesses, like more people walking means like more people visiting that store. Anyway, the image in front of you here is the summary of road sections under consideration for pedestrianization. I think we need like a better name for pedestrianization. It's just such a mouthful. <laughs> but the if you're familiar with this area, I'll just like bring up the Google Maps actually. Uh, Basilica del Santo Nino. I'm sorry, excuse Is it a proposal or still a... Uh, proposal pa siya. <laughs> proposal pa talaga. There's really kanang, um, everything got stopped uh, during um, the typhoon. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. And I was fortunate too because we we're planning to just like cover this. Like um, the idea was something temporary lang sa to test how effective um, pedestrianization would be. Currently, this section of road, uh, let me zoom out a bit more. So that's Cebu Island over here. Uh, Cebu Island over here. 
Cebu City, and it's in the historical district of Cebu down here. And it's uh, directly adjacent, or right beside Basilica del Santo Nino, one of the, or if not the oldest church in Cebu. And the idea was uh, this section of Osmania Boulevard be closed to kanang, um, vehicles and become pedestrian only. Uh, currently, um, this site over here, uh, uh, Diha Kosalem up to P. Borgos. Uh, Diha Kosalem is this like a uh, western road and P. Borgos is this eastern road. This section of road here is actually being closed already every Friday and Sunday for religious services. And then our, we talked to like the stakeholders. Uh, the main stakeholder is Basilica del Santo Nino. Um, the whole point is of this because we can only do we can only do pedestrianization under the um, what do you call this under religious activities. So we can't add more commercial activities. It has to be specifically for religious activities. So uh, that that was one problem. So we couldn't increase like economic activities. We can only just support or like have more religious activities on the site. So just like quickly summarizing it, our next step, our only sort of thing to do was really how do we make it more comfortable for pedestrians? So I have the um, map over here or like or the model. Where's my model type? Do 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 do. Uh, full tense. Do, 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 October, I think this is the one. So that was the problem. Like, how do we sort of make pedestrianization better when it's already like being closed already? And like, you know, uh, we don't. The budget was basically nothing, two uh, hundred k uh, pesos. So that's just for whatever materials we can find. A lot of like near towards the towards christmas a lot of like the stakeholders are saying what if we do uh recyclable like tables and chairs recyclable like tents or whatever but just to make it a little bit us, mm -hmm. are the stakeholders there agree to close it out sir are they um do they also want it ah yeah so they're already uh they're already closing it down um every friday and sunday so they do want it. Um, the only th the only thing we have to do, like my team has to do, or we were tasked to do, is like improve the experience of like walking towards the basilica, and that's the thing. It's like what uh, what else can we do? <laughs> it's, like it's a very kind of limited um, sort of scope of work that we could do. So this is basically our proposal. It's super kind of. Um, I guess I would say not much going on. It's just very simply laying out some tents here. The weaknesses of this current version of the proposal, it's not very visually interesting, like just a row of tents. So we were thinking about what about we create our own tents with recycled materials, and then we were about to do that, and then the uh, typhoon hit, and then, uh, yeah, I have, uh, I have to like fix everything. So my house, on, on my end, so I really didn't get to develop this further. So yeah. Um, some of the principles I applied here, uh, very like basic stuff, making sure that the visual cor the visual, uh, what do you call this? Uh, I wouldn't say visual corridor because the, 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 the basilica, the basilica towers right here, uh, maintain views towards the basilica because this is the main feature of this, um, area. So this principle basically, um, states, um, this is from this book, Urban Design. Okay. This book over here talks about creating character and creating a sense of uh, sense of place. This might be a little bit kanang foreign for engineers. For this deals with a, deals more on the aesthetic value of a site. Uh, these we will discuss more about this, but um, in general. Uh, what do we mean by creating a sense of place is to create uh, a memorable uh, experience for uh, pedestrians, even drivers, even um, store owners. So like immediately, you can imagine or you can remember that this is the, uh, the street for Santo Nino, uh, Basilica del Santo Nino. 
and then we just needed to enhance so a big goal of this like enhance our upgrade pedestrianization upgrade is to make sure that the um bell tower here can be seen from all sides of the uh the proposal so that's why we placed our um, tents here in the middle so that uh what do you call this we would only have one row of tents and because underneath the tents you can see the 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 what they call this the bell tower anymore so we just opted for uh single file tents but uh you can still see the tower from this side and from this side so that's just that's basic stuff now we only like uh, that dictate sort of the the form of the proposal and then umbrellas here in the middle again to maintain those sight lines and then uh, basically you need to like move out from the umbrellas a bit <laughs> you can peek at, at the uh what do you call this at the bell tower if you like like tilt your head a bit <laughs> that's like one challenge and then the the next challenge is just making it visually interesting like umbrellas everyone's seen umbrellas what makes umbrella special all to enhance that idea of making it more memorable and then if it's memorable people will see value in it if they think it's valuable they will help maintain it they will visit more and yeah uh, overall a lot of like a uh, cascading effect of several good things and let's go back to the process over here. So yeah, so that was basically creating the vision and design. We're at this stage for this project. And then once we finally hammer down like how to make it even more memorable and not just like have plain tents there, probably we'll get the okay to implement it. And then it's just a matter of monitoring and evaluation. And then over here, we have the different elements of site planning or like site development. Uh, number one that I try to teach my architecture students is that open space is very important because um, the way, I guess, basically everywhere in the world, even like architecture students in Sydney, uh, especially like the newer ones, those are like first year, second years, something like that. The idea is whenever you have a site, you have to develop all of it, like make sure there's no more open space. But that's actually the opposite of what we want to do. So notice I'm just going to um let me see i wonder if i can take us yeah i'll just take a screenshot much easier oops close 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 don't say notice again it would be very kind of even i did this at first uh tent proposal um the fir my first instinct was to put tents on both sides but as we found, as we, as we explained, that's uh, not a very good idea because, uh, yeah, you will block views to the, um, it really also depends on the kind of tents. Maybe if you design the tent in a way that you can, it obstructs lesser views. But the reason why we ended up with this design over here, uh, let's see, do, 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 draw shift N, E. So we can have this open space on both sides. So basically, we have uh, more natural light. Uh, let me color that with yellow. You have more natural light entering the church building over here. I think this is a this is a government building or like private building. The arcades can also be lit over here and then if if we did go through with the two tents on both sides for example the tent would be here and here very obviously uh, natural lighting it will be darker in this area because you're extending basically the roof at street level so it's not going to be uh, the only light is that's going to enter this space is really through the middle and that's not really efficient so that's a very simple thing that moving your tents or whatever design elements you have to preserve open space can have a very dramatic impact on your uh, proposal um, yeah okay the next element is circulation so this will be a bit more kind of relevant to uh, a, like a transportation project or a brt project because you're all about circulation <laughs> movement so in this proposal oops in this proposal here 
the idea of like how people move is that from the edge of the street, both streets, uh, Diha Kosalam is up here and Piborgos is down here. The idea is we allow people, or the concept is we allow people to either um, walk through normally on the sidewalks. Uh, this, this side has no sidewalks uh, near the Basilica. So uh, they can walk through normally like this on a sunny day, on a good day. And then when it's like raining or uh, it's not a very good day, it's too hot, they can walk through the middle like this. And then all the while, while they're walking towards the Basilica, they can still see the, uh, the different uh, shops. I oh, know the shops are on the right side. And then I, there's really nothing here. It's all fenced off on this side here. Also the same here. All the commercial buildings are, let's see, are over here. And this like, and they're usually they're mostly kind of. There's a Chow King here. There's a Jollibee. The stores are electronic stores. This building here is a bank, so maybe they could visit the bank and then, uh, or like go to the church and then go to the bank. But usually the church is the main attraction in this space. So really, how do you improve that um, circulation? One of the ideas I've been playing around with like, just in my spare time is what if I just uh, do something crazy with a path, uh, like something like diagonal, diagonal, just like really dire directing people to the entrance of the church like this. I haven't really developed that idea yet, but we can like move. Like uh, we're stuck on designing these stands to make it visually interesting. But maybe something like this would be better for circulation. Just really directing people, funneling them in towards the entrance of the church over here. So that's what I mean by circulation. On a larger scale, um, in like regional scale, circulation will also mean like how easily, how do you plan roads? How do you plan routes? Uh, this will, I think for that, you the best way would be, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Faye, the best way would be to locate the highest populations and then connect the dots. Like, uh, for example, in Cebu, um, one of the densely populated areas is Guadalupe. And then you have people who need to work from Guadalupe. They need to come into the city center. So maybe that will be one route for your uh, BRT. Where is Guadalupe over here? Like somewhere over here. I agree, I agree. However, yeah. Uh, I don't know that the consultants chose those uh, mga business areas mm -mm. or those uh, areas kung asa ang mga works. And they also chose the South Road property, sir, since um, the urban mm -mm. transport there is dib -dib wala siya yun, urban transport sa SRP. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay, it seems like there's only Canila na street, no? Kaning Vestil Street na mukha yes. uh -oh. Yeah, it's gonna be, if they're gonna. If my develop Nisha without any new residences, can you get bottleneck na ni dili? Muagi sa dili sa kuan sa tunnel. Yeah, but I think ano ang DPWH they have a future project also the, to open a I don't know a bridge mm. somewhere there. Mura mm. mo parallel siya sa Vestil. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think basin proposal pa siya or study pa. Mm. And I there I attended a meeting with um the United Architects of the Philippines, uh, Cebu branch. Now that the proposal, like before na himuang SRP back pa in the 2000s, na include ni ang mga um, uh, urban poor and in area instead of like segregating them to like the other side. <laughs> that could have been also like a um, a way to put in residential areas over here. Then I don't know where that bridge is going to go for the kind of disrupt the mga sa housing, you know. So we have a person from housing. So this is probably um, what they call this. Uh, I'm guessing osapod ka target ninyo like these uh, urban poor areas. How to like develop them or like improve them? <laughs> yes, sir. Kinda to mm. ano kumbaga, relocate them to a more yeah. uh, resilient area, safe areas. Mm. Yeah, that's that's really the challenge now, Cebu City. So if we look at Cebu City, the gun guys, sir, no, but no worry about budget if if the nansila. Yeah, they have to like. There's really no way except like on a multi-story. For how many stories? Um, currently in the 
in the West, the 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 consensus is for like low cost housing. You don't go up higher than five stories. Okay, they tried high rise back in the 70s and it didn't pan out. They had to demolish their like high high rise social housing structures. Yeah. And then this is like very political too. Okay, like it's it's an issue of the public. Where do you want to put your um urban poor? And it's also like kind of kanang morality and ethics, and at the same time a bit of economics. Okay, most of our kanang what they call this. Especially this architecture among the laborers, they come from like the urban poor, mga mason, mga carpenters. So, yeah, that's a big, a big question. Even I don't know the answer to. But yeah, that circulation and building envelope. Yeah, the building itself or whatever structure you need to construct. Next, so applying this to urban and regional planning, we already discussed this a bit by looking at Cebu City. It's just this, these steps, but on a larger scale. Uh, when we talk about urban open uh, open space in uh, urban and regional planning we're talking about nature reserves public parks when we talk about circulation we're talking about transportation infrastructure new roads new bridges uh, sidewalks uh, bicycle lanes etc et and then instead of the building envelope we're looking at the urban fabric so zoning uh, water management sewage management telecommunications we really felt that Sa Cebu, like uh, when you got hit by the typhoon. And then I think one of the benefits of getting hit by the typhoon, there we've already started like cleaning up our spaghetti wires, some uh, electric poles, because some of the poles went down. So they were forced to finally clean it up. So, yeah, those are some benefits, uh, some silver linings to disasters. Okay. So uh, that's basically the planning process. So these are the descriptions which I just like discussed. One, two, three, four, vision design, implementation, monitoring, etc. So what are the objectives in site planning and also in regional planning? So what do you want to do with open space? So open space, of course, if it's nature reserves, you want to preserve it. Or if you want to create new public space, like uh, new public parks, it needs to be located in an area with like the right number of people, like a large enough population so they can use it. For example, we're going to look through Cebu City again. You can see it's totally built up. And we know that Guadalupe, Barangay Guadalupe, is the most populated um, barangay in Cebu and probably in like uh, the central Visayas. And we look through here, let's see the city center. Not much public parks, it's all sort of closed off by these like subdivisions. So we have a subdivision over here. You can tell it's a subdivision because of its like winding roads. Uh, dead end roads and the houses you can see the different single uh single detached housing but if you go down let's say kanisha uh we zoom out Kugamai. let's go down uh v rama we have some temples over here we have uh this looks like yep shellcraft park uh what they call this um gas stations we have public buildings but really no open space we have like the high like a uh, high rise residential area uh, new developments again really no public parks whatsoever so this should be i think a good location for or a good area to locate a public park because there's a lot of people here and there's really no way for them to like go out and there's no destination for them except to go to ayala all the way over here or they need to go to work in like a, a hospital. Usually, mga nganani na subdivisions, the owners are a bit of like white collar jobs. So they they either doctors, lawyers, um, uh, what do you call this? Industry professionals who work at who work in big offices somewhere in the city center or maybe somewhere here's Ayala. So they have like a long way to travel. And then when they have to relax, there's really no space. They just have to stay at their own homes. Um, given that their homes are actually pretty nice, but what about those in the lower income bracket? Um, like for example, this area over here, I don't know what it's called, but even they have like some kind of open space over here. I think they're gonna, they're, I'm gonna guess it's some kind of basketball court. Uh, let's see, where is this road? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's the road. Yeah, it's just like a series of 
this is the biggest challenge of uh, housing. How do we <laughs> upgrade or relocate this? Seems like it's a dead end, no? There's no access here. Yeah, well, Ayusha. Very strange. And I need a group of houses here with some kind of road, but you don't see it from here. Maybe it's covered by yeah, some kind of construction. I'm kanang back alley entrance. Okay, continuing. Um, let's see, nature reserves, transportation infrastructure. So this does not uh, only include streets and road networks, but also shipping routes. Uh, both must be utilized given that the Philippines is an archipelago, blah, 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 blah. So it's all here. Urban fabrics, it, we're talking about city zoning. What is the goal of zoning is to like uh, create an efficient use of lands or zones so that we get more for less. So we develop in a way that we're maximizing the land so we can preserve open space and like uh, have more sustainable development. Water, again, uh, provide potable water to the citizens living in that area power that refers to like electricity um who is our supplier in the in cebu that's veco telecommunications about like uh, our phone lines and internet and then i think another big issue for cebu is waste management because this is something uh, we can see it all over um, our city and it's not very clean who's handling this waste where does the waste go our landfills are i think not being properly maintained uh, for the most part and then down here, I will upload a recording of our video so that we can like sort of refer to it later, or like in case you need to do some work and then you need to like come back. Okay, and then some additional links here, like um, some interesting videos I found that uh, might like sort of like uh, just get you in the mood for studying uh, how does the internet how does the internet work and how landfills work, <laughs> something like that. Sigi. So, so I think that's the end of this lecture. Um, I'll stop presenting, stop recording.